to do. We're here at Megaland in Edinburgh for the biggest sporting event in Scotland today. It's not hockey, it's not even football, it's for British American football. So the reason this is a huge game is because the Pirates hadn't lost on our Scottish team since 1996 when they lost to Fife 49ers. Unfortunately that record was broken this year by Edinburgh Rules. The small. Now Edinburgh just got promoted to the Premier Division last year. Last year the Pirates and Edinburgh tied the first game at home for the Pirates 26-26 and then the Pirates won on the second leg at Edinburgh 15-20. Now this year the Pirates home game the Edinburgh won by one point. Unfortunately that caused the Pirates to make a decision where they had to let go of their head coach Ross Templeton and replace him with Jamie McLaughlin. Now Jamie McLaughlin has been in a kind of unenviable task of being 0-3, kind of playing all the kind of easier games to begin with and now has to kind of try and save them from relegation. He did coach them against Manchester, Manchester are probably the second best team in the division. He whooped them 41-0 last weekend I believe it was. So this weekend is a kind of battle for the best team in Scotland and the kind of survival of the Pirates in the Premier Division. And then we're won by one point, so for the Pirates to claim they're the best team in Scotland, they need to beat Edinburgh by more than one point. So let's see if they can do it. As both team gets warmed up for the game, I uh, can't help but notice there's no scoreboard here. How you may know who's winning? Boo! Looks like East Kilbride have won the toss. Looks like East Kilbride Pirates will receive the kick. Edinburgh a bit of kick off to the Pirates. Whistles in. Well that was a bit of an anticlimax for one of the most exciting points in the game. Not a good start from the Pirates, spent three now out, out punting. Let's see if the defence can hold up. And then another mistake by the Pirates gives Edinburgh a free 15 yards. Edinburgh went three and out as well, but a good punt pinned Pirates deep. Pirates now roll and get a first first down. Oh. Edinburgh Rose just got a big play down to the Pirates red zone. Big time catch and run by Edinburgh number 80 for the first points of the game. 6 0 Edinburgh. Some big uh, momentum swings there. Pirates threw an interception, but then straight away the defence got a strip sack. Recovered, so Pirates offense back on. Ooh, they're taking shots downfield. I think they've seen something with Edinburgh defense. Just need connecting these, and I think they're going to get a score. Ooh. That was a surreal. End of the first quarter. Edinburgh seven, Pirates nil. Newbabdi connects in the big pass. Take it for a TD. Can they level the score at seven now? First play of the second quarter, and Pirates connect for a big TD. Kicks good, tied at seven. Pirates seem to have got the momentum now. Forcing a three and out, then a bad punt means they're starting in good field position. Let's see if they can capitalise. One of the things I think is missing for the Pirates is this speed line just not getting behind the team. Third down here, third and ten. Uh, look at the bag. What are you doing? Look at 77. Oh! Touchdown! <laughs> Pirates take the lead on our new Bapti pass. Not sure who it was to, 82 I think? 82? Um, not new Bapti pass to 82 I think it was. Uh, they now take the lead 13-7 after missing the extra point. Don't know how long's left, but no long left in half time, but it looks like the Pirates are starting to find their feet a wee bit. Two minutes left in the half, looks like Edinburgh are getting a wee bit of momentum now though. Stood down moves who get time and the down marker against them, but they are near the end zone. Just heard the uh, head coach Jimmy McGawkin tell Barty to take a knee. So that'll be the half, Pirates leading 13-7. Now for your halftime entertainment, this review about Jurassic World. 
That's me just back from seeing Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and I did not think this was a good film. Um, the story was a bit rich guy who's got almost unlimited wealth decides to do something pure sketchy so he can get more money. Don't really why was he doing that? He's already got the money. Um, there seemed to be lots of bits in it that were like really convenient, like, oh, I really wish we had a flying dinosaur right now. There's one right there, let's just use that. Daft stuff like that just kind of happened all the kind of time. And some of the bits like didn't even, didn't even make sense. Characters did like really dumb things, you're just like, no, don't do that, you're definitely going to get eaten. And it's like, oh, look, you get eaten. What a surprise. There was even one point a dinosaur had a chance of like a bigger meal or the tiny smaller meal and it's like I definitely want the tiny smaller meal rather than this massive meal in front of me right now. I'll go chase it and you're just like, it makes no sense, it makes no sense. Um, it also felt a wee bit like they'd kind of, like a wee bit like a Greatest Hits album where they'd brought back things from the previous Jurassic Park films, except for instead of being a greatest hit album, it was like a cover band greatest hits album. So it was like, oh, we've seen that before, but it's not as good as the original. And there was like just lots of those kind of wee bits in it. And it's just like, meh. So yeah, I don't think this was a good movie. I didn't really think it added a lot to the Jurassic Park um, film franchise. Felt a wee bit like a kids movie, like it didn't really need to make sense, but let's just have big action scenes make it look amazing. It did look amazing. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think this was a good film. I think it just lacked a good story, lacked a good body with any kind of decent motivation. Hope you enjoyed that film review. Now back to the action. Pirates right, now kicking off the second half. Looks like Cornelius Bapti to kick. And it's a good one for a touchback. Can the Pirates keep the kind of momentum they had going at the half time? Or will Edinburgh come out rejuvenated? Finn Edinburgh's short passing game works against him. Interception by the Pirates. Take it for the house. Extra point, no good. Edinburgh seven, Pirates. How many? 19, I think. 19. 89. One touchdown then. 19. Edinburgh put together a really strong drive here in the third quarter. Let's see if they can capitalise. Score and the kick is good. 14 19 now. Tension. Well, Edinburgh just rip off a huge gain there for a TD. Edinburgh are inexplicably going for two, which makes absolutely zero sense here. Paris have shown they can't kick field goals, so that'd be the only reason why Edinburgh would go for two is if they're worried about Pirates' field goal game. It's now 22-18 to Edinburgh. If the Pirates defence can show this up and get their offence back in the game, I think this could be a, a nail-biter all the way to the finish. That's the end of the third quarter. Pirates down by three. They just went three and out. Edinburgh have got the ball. Let's see if the Pirates can uh, turn us around. It's probably the most important drive right now. This could probably need to stop Edinburgh on this drive and a three and out just to get their offence back in the field. Otherwise, it could be game over. That big run. It looks like Edinburgh are playing a bit more conservative, trying to kind of grind out the clock rather than trying to get more points on the board. Edinburgh's run game seems to be wearing out the Pirates a bit. We're in that formation when they've thrown the screen to this middle guy several times for big plays. Run again. Now 
Could that be the nail in the coffin for the Pirates Premiership status and best team in Scotland? So looks like there's eight minutes left in the game, so still plenty of time for the Pirates to get back in this, but they need to need to change their mood in the sidelines, kind of a wee bit defeated. But a three now here would probably go a long way to change that. Third and about three or four. Crucial play in the game here. Third and nine. Edinburgh are happy to let as much of the clock go. This is our crucial situation for the Pirates. The rules have managed to slowly and methodically plod their way down the field here, taking up as much time as possible. But still getting positive yards. Less than two minutes in the game, there may even be less than one minute in the game. Pirates down by at least two scores. I think it's game over. So Pirates put together a super quick drive for the score. Pass from Bapti to number eight for the TD. Now they're going for the onside kick. Tension in the air. Who's recover the onside kick? We'll take some knees to end this game and that'll be all she wrote. I would tell you the score, but there's no scoreboard here. The commentator called that Champions in the North, but that's wildly inaccurate. Uh, maybe Champions of Scotland, but that is all. So I've actually coached for the Pirates before. I uh, used to be their head coach, then offensive coordinator. It's a, a tough game this one, because the Pirates definitely look like they have the more talent than Edinburgh. But they just don't look like a team. They just don't look like they're all pulled together. Um, there was times when the defence was on, that's normally when the offence supports them by cheering for them. It just looked like they were missing that, just looking at that, missing that kind of cohesion that pulls everything together. So, they do look like they have the talent, but they just don't quite look like they're there yet. Which is a shame, because ultimately that's the bit that should be easiest to achieve. I think Jamie McLaughlin's got some stuff he's going to work to try and pull this all together, but maybe them getting relegated to Division 1 will actually work out good for them. They'll get that taste of the winning spirit if they go down. Bounce straight back up. We'll see. That's all from this week's vlog. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you like it, subscribe as well. Share it with your friends. Five more to get to 100. Five more people get 100. So we're almost there. We're almost there. Bye.